Okay, hi everybody. In this video, we are going to um, introduce the idea of uh, another method of estimating parameters called the method of moments, which is oftentimes uh, abbreviated with MOM or MOM estimates, we can call them. Um, so we're going to start with some random variable x, and let's say it has a PDF which depends on k different parameters that we are going to call theta1, theta2, all the way up to theta k. And we're going to independently pick random variables um, from this distribution. And let's say we pick n of them. So we have x1 up to xn. And so what the method of moments is going to do is we're going to want to determine the values of theta1 up to theta k so that our um, PDF best fits the data that we've observed in the following sense. Um, so we can start by saying, I would like um, the mean of the population X to equal the mean of the sample. So we want to make sure that whatever um, parameters I come up with, they're going to give me um, the same mean as I, w as I got from my sample. Then we can move on and say, well, what's another property that might not be enough? So then we might want to also look at, well, I would like the variance of the population to equal the variance of my sample. So now I've got my center and the spread of the values in my sample are going to be accurately reflected um, using these values of theta for the PDF. Um, and that might be enough, but there are um, more considerations. So for example, if we were working with a normal distribution, this would be enough. The mean and the variance totally determine a normal distribution. But if I have some other distribution, maybe it's skewed like this, um, we want to be careful in the sense that I could come up with two distributions that have about the same spread and have about the same center, but these two distributions are skewed differently. So this distribution over here, the top one, for example, is skewed to the right, it has a tail to the right, and this one has a tail to the left. So we can continue on and say, well, I would like to pick values of these parameters so that the skewness of my population matches the skewness of the sample. And there are other um, properties that we can continue on. So in some sense, if you think back to how you use the a Taylor series in calculus to approximate a function, um, what the Taylor series is doing is it's saying we want our approximation for the function um, and the original function to have the same value. We want them to have the same slope. We want them to have the same concavity and so on. And we do that by making sure the function, the derivative, and the second derivative, and the third derivative, and so on, match up. So it's a very similar idea with method of moments. Um, we're going to find values of the parameters so that the properties of random variable x are equal to the properties that, that we've observed in our sample. So hopefully, um, in spirit, this makes sense what we're doing. We want to find the values of these parameters so that our population resembles what our sample looks like. Okay, so we've kind of discussed in theory what the method of moments involves. We're going to match up properties of our population with properties we've observed in our sample. Um, so let's formalize this a little bit using what are, what are called um, moments. So if x is a random variable and it has a PDF f, um, then for any positive integer k, we call the kth theoretical moment of x. We denote it with a mu sub k, and it's basically the expected value of x raised to the kth power, where again, k is 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. So if we're working with a continuous distribution, that would be an integral. If we're working with a discrete distribution, well, that would be a sum. And um, we've seen some of these already. So for example, the first moment, that's just a fancy word for the mean, right? The expected value of x to the first power, that's what we have just been calling the mean of the population. And though it's not exactly the same, um, once I know the first moment, and if I know the second moment, 
then that's enough to determine what the variance is, right? Because remember, um, the variance we can write as the expected value of x squared. So now we can call that the second moment minus the first moment squared. So basically, you can think about the second moment is essentially telling us the variance. And um, if you move on, you can look at the third moment. And the third moment, similarly, is related to what we call the skewness of a distribution. Um, so that would be whether it's skewed more skewed to the left or to the right, or whether it's symmetric. Um, so if a distribution is symmetric, then the skewness is zero. Um, if the distribution is skewed to the left, then this, then the, um, excuse me, if the distribution is skewed to the left, its skewness is positive. And if a distribution is skewed to the right, um, then it, the skewness of that would be negative. And um, so on. You could look at the fourth moment, which is related to what's called the kurtosis of a distribution. And this is telling us how peaky a distribution is. Um, and so by that, just informally, what we mean is um, if a distribution is approximately normal, then its kurtosis would be zero. Um, if a distribution is more peaky than a normal distribution, it has a positive kurtosis. And if a distribution is less peaky than a normal distribution, so say it looks like this, that would have a negative kurtosis. Um, so if you've taken a class in probability or if you're planning on it, um, you'll learn a lot about moments um, and how they relate to skewness and kurtosis in more detail. But for now, um, it's enough to know that when you calculate these theoretical moments of x, their expected values of x raised to the power of k. And they tell us something about the properties of a distribution, such as the mean and the variance. And there are other properties when you go up to higher moments of x. And uh, we can similarly look at these properties for a sample. Um, and when we calculate these values for the sample, we just call them sample moments. And so for the population, we denote them with a mu sub k, um, the usual kind of Greek letters for population parameters. And for the sample, we would use a capital M sub k. Okay, let's take a look at an example on the next slide of how we could calculate the theoretical moment and a sample moment. Okay, in this example, we are going to take a look at a uh, random variable x, and let's assume it's continuous, and it comes from a distribution with PDF uh, given over here. So we have two parameters, lambda and delta. And here's a formula for the PDF, and we're assuming here that values of random variable x are strictly greater than delta. Both of these parameters are positive. And so we want to find the first and second theoretical moments of x. And um, so to find the first theoretical moment, that's mu, or now we could denote it with mu sub 1, we're going to find the expected value of x to the first power. So that means if we're dealing with a continuous random variable, we're going to integrate from delta up to infinity x times f of x. Uh, and so the delta comes from the fact that our domain is x is bigger than delta. So we're going to integrate from delta up to infinity x times lambda e to the minus lambda x minus delta. So that was our uh, given PDF function. So we would need to evaluate this, and here the variable is x, and we're treating the parameters as constants. So here we can use integration by parts, um, using u is equal to x, and then we could define v prime as the rest of this stuff, the lambda e to the minus lambda x minus delta. And so this is a good candidate for integration by parts, because um, when I take the derivative of u, I get 1. And when I integrate v prime to find v, I can do that. And I get minus e to the minus lambda x minus delta. And now the resulting integral of um, 
u prime v I would be able to integrate. So skipping some of the details, using integration by parts, we would get that the first moment is delta plus 1 over lambda. And then I'm looking for the second theoretical moment, we'll call this mu sub 2. Well, that would be the expected value of x squared. Um, so again, we would integrate from delta up to infinity. And now we're going to integrate x squared times f of x. And our f of x is still the same. It's the lambda uh, e to the minus lambda x minus delta. And for that one, you would need to use integration by parts two times. So it's not trivial um, to integrate that. It's maybe a little tedious, so I'll, I'll skip that detail. But you can verify, in that case, you would get delta plus 1 over lambda, all of that squared, plus 1 over lambda squared. So um, those would be our first and second theoretical moments of x. And if I wanted to calculate the corresponding first and second sample moments, which is being asked in part B, where now we have a sample where the first value is 3, the second value 4, and 5, and then 8, well, um, these go much easier, right? So our um, first sample moment, M1, is just the sample mean x bar. So for that, we would take the 3 plus the 4, plus the 5, plus the 8, divide it all by n, which in this case is 4, and that gives us first sample moment equal to 5. And for the second sample moment, this one we would square each of the values. So I mean, this would be 3 squared, plus 4 squared, plus 5 squared, plus 8 squared, all divided by 4 again, and in that case, the second sample moment comes out to 28.5. Okay, so um, one thing to make a note of here is that when we calculate our two theoretical moments in part A, these um, are dependent upon these parameters, delta and lambda, but there's no dependence on, on x here after we integrate with respect to x. And when we calculate the first and second sample moments, sample moments, we can actually calculate those values. So those are going to be constant values. Um, in this case, we got 5 and 28.5. So the theoretical moments are going to depend on our parameters. The sample moments are going to be values that we calculate from our sample. And the method of moments is going to um, be an estimation method where we're going to line up each of our theoretical moments with each of our sample moments. So we'll outline that process on the next slide.